Good morning, Facebook friends. Uh, today we're going to look at 2 John and 3 John. Now, 2 John was written by the elder, which we know that that was John, and it was written to the elect lady and her children. Now, there are a couple of theories of as to what this or who this is. First of all, it could be a literal woman that he uh, knew and was perhaps in the church uh, and her children. Or another theory is that this elect woman was the church itself and the children were the, uh, the congregation. And uh, either way, the content of the book would apply to either theory as to who it was written to. Now, in that particular day, in the first two centuries especially, the gospel was carried uh, uh, by itinerant evangelists, and they would travel from place to place, and oftentimes the, the city or uh, would, uh, a home, a, a person would take them in their home and provide for their needs in whatever city that they were at. And uh, with that in mind, I think the content... Uh, uh, text and the content of Second uh, John and also Third John. When we look at it, uh, we could understand it a little better. But um, uh, he is talking. First of all, he again is warning uh, this elect lady, whoever she may have been, um, about the uh, 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 false uh, prophets and false teachers that uh, are obviously in the world at that particular time. Uh, and so she must be cautious. She must have discernment. But let's begin looking in verse number five and verse six. And now I ask you, dear lady, not as though I were writing you a new commandment, but the one we have had from the beginning that we love one another. And this is love that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, just as you have heard from the beginning so that you should walk in it. Now, we're to have love, but we're also must have discernment uh, for those who are trying to creep in. Let me just say that the enemy, when we read this scripture, the devil is described as a roaring lion and also as a snake. Now, we know that snakes often sneak around in the grass and they creep in, as we read in the book of Jude. Uh, they're those that creep in, and I believe this is the snake uh, um, aspect of, of the enemy. And so I, I believe that John here is, is trying to caution uh, this elect lady, whether it's the church or a literal lady, uh, about those who are going to sneak in, but you must have love. Have love, but caution. Let's go ahead and read in verse number seven. It says, For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not confess the coming of Christ uh, in the flesh. Such a one is the deceiver and the antichrist. Um, and verse 10, uh, If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting. Uh, for whoever greets him takes part in his wicked works. And so uh, Paul, I mean, excuse me, John is very clear that you must beware of those who are sneaking in these deceivers. Let's run to third John. In third John, it's very similar. Uh, there are different characters. First of all, there's, um, again, it starts off with the elder, which is John. And then there's Gaius, which is a, we'll call him a good guy. And then there is Demetrius, uh, which is um, uh, 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 a good a good guy. He's got a good reputation. Let me just read you the verses here. Uh, Diotrephes also he's the bad guy. So we got two good guys and a bad guy in chapter uh, in in the book of Third John. And uh, let me just read verse number two in Third John. And again, Demetrius is a. Um, um, he is commending a, a Demetrius. Let me read verse 2. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health. Um, this is to Gaius. He's talking to Gaius now. Uh, good health as it goes well with your soul. Now, I want to stop right there just a moment. Good health as it is with your soul. There's a principle here that I think that, you know, a lot of people... Um, uh, are, are very uh, health conscious, which we should be, but we should also be soul conscious. Can we uh, think about what our um, 
our health would be uh, if it was equivalent to our soul, uh, how our spiritual life would be. If we equate the two, in other words, if we're really hot and we're on fire for God, then we're real healthy. But if we're not, then, then we're not healthy. You know, how, how would we relate that or, or, or if we were, um, uh, you know, to compare that? He says, I wish you, uh, I wish your soul to be healthy. Let me just read that again for you. Uh, in verse number two, that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. So he's equating the two. Let's go ahead and look at verses nine and 10. I've written something to the church, but Diotrephes, this is the bad guy here, who likes to put himself first, does not acknowledge our authority. So if I come, I will pr I bring up what he is doing, talking wicked nonsense against us and not Content with that, he refuses to welcome the brothers and also stops those who want to and uh, puts them out of the church. So he's in the church, but he is um, really causing confusion and problems within the church. And verse 11, beloved, do not imitate evil, but imitate good. Whoever does good is uh, from God. Whoever does evil has not seen God. So he is basically, he's... Uh, uh, saying this thing about uh, Diotrephes, he's saying he's doing evil. Don't imitate him. You're to imitate those that are good. And then he runs right in to one that is good. That's Demetrius. Demetrius has received a good testimony from everyone and from uh, truth itself. We also add our testimony, and you know that our testimony is true. So uh, basically what we can see here is he is saying, pick out people to imitate that are good. Don't imitate those that are bad. And we know uh, whether they're good or bad by their, their word, their testimony, their fruit. We see this in the Gospels about how you'll know them by, your, by their fruit. And so he's warning Gaius and helping Gaius to realize and recognize, look, don't have anything to do uh, with this man. And so uh, I encourage you, listen, we, we can do the same thing and, and have those same principles in our life. I encourage you to be with us tomorrow. We're going to start the book of Revelation. It's our last book in this chronological reading of the Bible. And uh, I encourage you to be with us. Father, be, uh, be with our people today. Give them a great day in the Lord. And we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless.